Hi everybody, welcome to video number four of the Cycle Cart Frame video series. Uh, today we're doing a little bit of a deviation. Uh, kind of what we're doing is we're making a new frame for my existing cycle cart, making it a little bit narrower. Uh, we talked about the video one, two, and three. Um, basically, this video is a little bit of a deviation from a standard cycle cart. So a standard cycle cart is what we would call a Stevenson cycle cart, which is two parallel frame rails, which is essentially that right there, you can see they're totally parallel and narrow at the front, a little wider at the back. And what happens is it gets a little wider as it goes back. So my previous frame has that, both of my carts actually have that, where the frames get wider at the back. So this one I'm changing slightly. Uh, right in front of the rear axle, I'm notching the frame and we're going to take the back of the frame and square it up. At least where the axle goes. I might, uh, after we get past the axle, actually bring it in a little bit because it's going to have a boat tail, sort of a tail section like a Grand Prix race car. So instead of being wide at the back, it's going to be narrowing toward the tip. So it's a little bit of a deviation for the standard. Um, doesn't mean it's not a cycle car, it just means it's a um, uh, little extra work, a little more complication than what you would normally do on a standard frame. So I decided to do that kind of last minute, wasn't planning on it, but Dennis Thomas recommended it. I don't know, a few months ago when I was talking about this project and uh, come to figure out that's a pretty good idea. Um, I've done it one other time on a Bugatti frame I built for another guy and it worked out really well. So I'm gonna show you what that is right now. Okay, so here's our frame. We've got our holes cut and at the rear cross member directly in front of the axle, this is five inches forward. The, um, I went ahead and cut these already. So I cut the frame right in the center of the cross member. I did that so that it would be welded on both sides as well to give it a little extra strength. So I marked for my center line, which we previously marked, we know that this is 18 inches at this point, so I kept it 18 inches, so I measured over nine inches here, and nine inches back here, and drew a line. So what's gonna happen is, um, where from the pivot point, so that goes in, from the pivot point here to the back, we're gonna take a straight frame, so it's a basically almost an inch, about three quarters of an inch from where the old mark is to the new mark. So this is gonna be brought in like this. And I don't know if you can see in the, try to run down the frame here. You can see the, the, where it kind of bends right there. I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not, but that's, that right there is straight. And this is how much we're doing. So we're doing that on both sides. We've already got it cut over here as well. And because of where the cut is at, I had to clearance this just slightly to give it somewhere to, to actually pivot. So we weld it, we'll have material to weld there. And then on the frame member, I had to, just took the flapper disc and sanded this for about, a, I don't know, less than a minute. We just got it enough clearance so that when we put this in here, it goes together and put it where it needs to be. You can kind of see how, how that closes up. So that's where the joint's gonna be. And uh, just gotta weld it up now so that'll be nice and straight and square. I'm going to go ahead and use my little trick with these pieces of wood back here. So in a few minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and screw these down on both sides. So lock this in so it doesn't move around on us. Uh, so that way, hopefully the whole back end of this car will stay square. And like I said, I'm not gonna do it in this video, but I might again notch it back here at some point uh, to bring this back in. So the motor's gonna sit right about here. They're actually probably closer to here. Okay, so the little brackets are installed. Everything's nice and square, measures 18 inches from here to here, same as up from here to there, perfectly 18, so nice and straight and square, that's what we want. Um, it's not a dramatic difference, but I think it'll be worth it. So, um, see those brackets on both sides, and that just all locates it, same thing with these brackets here. To keep everything from moving around when you're, we're getting ready to weld it, more, um, I built these on top of cardboard before, and it's a real pain, so this is a great method, so I'm really looking forward to putting this together, welding it, and, See how she comes out. Okay, so I've got these starting to be welded. I got a little bit more finishing welding to do. And I realized I made a mistake um, in laying out my frame. So this is the axle center line. Um, initially I had the frame member here, which was my intention. Then as I was saying, oh, this is five inches away. And I thought, well, this doesn't look like five inches um, from here, which it's not, it's five inches from there. So whoopsies, I put it, I put the thing on the wrong side. So anyway, these things happen, so no big deal. So I moved my brackets over 
And so this framing member now will go about an inch forward of where it was. So no big deal. Um, so the, this is gonna have a weld here, which is gonna be hidden anyway inside the engine compartment. I'm gonna weld this in both sides. So when you're building these things, you're gonna make a little mistake here and there. So when you do, just fix it. Don't live with it, make it right. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, and since I'm at this point, I think I'm gonna go ahead and weld in these two cross members um, while I'm here. That way I can take this entire thing out of the jig, do a little finish welding without it moving around. Hopefully, um, I'm gonna gusset it back here with the cross brace that's gonna be removed later. So let's do that now. Okay, so there you go. So these two cross members are welded in place. Um, some of these welds turned out good. Some of them, not so good. I mean, it's like Ray Charles welded that thing, but it's melted metal. It's gonna to stay together. And the beautiful part about cycle carts is um, all these welds are hidden by your body. So they don't have to be pretty, they just have to be strong. So um, of course we're gonna clean up a few of them. We're gonna grind a few things down that are visible. Uh, so they're nice and flat, but uh, so where it counts, it's, it looks good. So for right now, we've got our two cross members in. Um, still waiting on a few parts so I can tackle the rear section because uh, that's going to be a totally different deal back here. Um, anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions on cycle carts or what we're doing here on the workshop, uh, feel free to send me a message or follow us on Facebook on the cycle, Arizona Cycle Cart Club. And the uh, cyclecartclub.com is a huge website with tons and tons of information on cycle carts. So uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.